welcome to the Sundar Button Hunting Reserve. My name is Asmita Gurung. I work for the reserve as one of the conservation officers. Tourists come to Nepal from all over the world for the unique trophies you can hunt here, the Nor and the Tar. We use that foreign income to support our economy and our wildlife conservation programs, especially for endangered species. Protecting both fauna and flora in our beautiful country is something that is very dear to the hearts of Nepali people. Is this your first time here? Then I hope it will be an unforgettable assignment for you. Kana kayo? Oh, it means have you eaten? That's usually the first thing a Nepali person will say after meeting you. It's basically a greeting. I know you've been on the road for a long time to get here all the way from Kathmandu, so I'd be starving if I were you. In rural areas of Nepal, you don't see a lot of hotels, but rather something called homestays. People offer travelers food and a place to stay for a fee. I have a homestay myself, and you're more than welcome to come over. It's a great way to discover another culture on a more personal level, don't you think? My house is in a small village called Lek Banjang in the hilly region. There, I've just sent you the location. Hilly region. Oh, right. You know hill means something different in Nepal. Any mountain that has trees on it, we call it a hill. If not, it's a mountain. In Pahar, as we also call it, the mountains can be up to 3,000 meters high. And generally, they don't have a lot of snow. But we also have valleys, meadows, plains. Further up north, that's where you'll find the very high mountains that we're maybe more famous for, the Himalayas. But we just say the Himal region. And if you go south, you'll notice the plains are completely different in everything. Climate, vegetation and wildlife. In a way, Sundarbatan is like a mini version of Nepal. Our country is made up of very different landscapes and a lot of different cultures and languages. Yeah, that's my village. In Nepal, we're usually very laid back. So once you found my house, just go in and get some rest if you need to. By the way, I cooked some sel roti before I left this morning, just in case. It's a traditional delicacy made with rice flour. Help yourself. You're welcome. Feel free to take a couple more for the road, alright? If you plan on trekking for hours on your own out there, you'll need some food. If you're ready, let's get started with your first assignment. Head south to the nearest lookout tower, and I'll fill you in on the way. 
That's me and Birendra, the conservation officer for Terai. That was taken last year at Holi, my favorite festival. Your time because we have a so-called problem tiger at the moment. We're currently gathering reports about the severity of the situation and cross-referencing our monitoring data with any footage from the camera traps. But we also need an expert tracker on the ground to help us locate that tiger and find out the reason for its unusual behavior. Call that region Terai, or the Southern Plains. It's very different from the rest of Nepal. It's a tropical climate with swamps and grasslands, similar to parts of northern India. Most people in Terai have a farm or livestock, but it can be tough to make a decent living there. Before we send you into tiger territory, can I ask you to make one ethical kill and harvest? Check the details on your hunter mate. We carefully screen all contractors to check both their hunting skill level and their ethics. I'm sure you understand why we want to make sure you can choose the right specimen and land an ethical shot. In Buddhism, all living beings are seen as equal. It's a principle that commands to not harm or kill without purpose. It doesn't mean that you can never hunt or kill, but you should never cause any unnecessary suffering. That's why even foreign tourists get a limited number of hunting tickets and a designated hunting block when they come here. You know, some of these animals have lived in Terai much longer than humans. For example, the tiger. So they are a valuable part of this world just like us. Very clean harvest. Well done. I can see why our counterparts in other reserves were always so positive about you. 
I can tell that you really are an expert tracker as well. It can be difficult to track specimens in that wet climate, even for Terai people. By the way, did you enjoy the silver tea? <laughs> You've only just arrived, but you can probably guess how crucial food is in our culture. Now you and I can dig into that problem tiger together. You see, usually, the tigers and the humans' territories don't overlap. Both are wary of each other and keep their distance. But one of them is making the people in the Terai very nervous. She's been sighted a bit too close to settlements several times in the last couple of days. A really unique one too. A pseudo-melanistic tigress, if you can believe that. First time such a specimen is naturally born in at least 50 years. So we need to get to the bottom of this before any accidents happen. Let's start with the area where Tara was sighted last. Soon you'll meet another of the reserve's conservation officers. His name is Birendra. He and I have been working together for almost 10 years now, ever since I started working here. It took a while, but now I think we're friends. He's lived in the Terai his whole life, so he remembers the time before this region became part of the hunting reserve. Birendra Dai and I are actually from two different ethnic groups. Traditionally, we don't have the same culture and don't even speak the same language. For centuries, it was very hard to access certain hills and valleys. It's still the case nowadays, to be honest. That's why our country has an incredible cultural diversity. I think over 100 different cultures and just as many languages. Good thing that most people speak Nepali, our official language. I'm Gurung, and my people mostly live in various parts of the hilly region. Some of us are Buddhists, like me, and others are Hindu. Take Birindadai, on the other hand. He's Taru, a group of indigenous cultures that have lived in the southern plains for centuries. They're usually Hindu. Got it. Thanks. That is where our tigress, Tara, was last sighted. It's important we try to find patterns in her roaming. Try to spot any recent bug marks and track them. Be on your guard, of course. You're on their turf now, not ours. I've been trying to call Birendadai since he was supposed to help you with the tiger and it's his area. But I guess he's on Nepali time. He's a good man. Don't count on him to show emotion and get ready for some serious grumbling. But I've seen how he is with the teenager that helps him on the farm. So I know there's a heart behind that frown. That poor kid, Manish. His family's had it rough money-wise, so now he sees Birendadai like his grandfather, I guess.
Well done. It's impressive to see your expertise as a tracker, even in terrain that was unfamiliar to you. So what have we got? Partially eaten livestock and a backpack only a few meters away. Could you take a closer look at the carcasses? I see. Based on how you're describing the teeth marks, I'll have to assume that was a tiger. Tara. Tigers. They sometimes eat livestock out in the wild. That's pretty common and unfortunately that's always a major financial problem for the owners. But now this one seems to attack animals directly next to humans, which means that she's become way too comfortable with our presence. I'm worried that we might have an urgent threat on our hands. Could you please keep following that track? I'm getting you some backup. Rainstorm? Yeah, they're a thing in the tropical climate of the Terai sometimes. But it's not monsoon season yet, so let's hope it will be a short one. What? The rainstorm has washed away the tiger's tracks. All of them. If you can't find any more tracks, that's okay. We'll just have to try something else. This could be really bad. I can't shake the feeling that Tara might become a man-eater. For what it's worth, I really appreciate you jumping right in and following through on such a dangerous assignment, even though you've only just arrived here. We couldn't have expected something like this. Hmm. 
Hello, Smita. Do you read? Oh, are you the new contractor? Good to meet you. My name is Virendra Maji. Ah, Virendra Dai, at last. Yes, and our new colleague has already been able to track the tiger. It attacked livestock right next to a human. Yes, I know. The backpack belongs to a young woman who lives in a village south of the river. She is fine now, but she felt the tiger wanted to attack her too. The tiger was roaming near my village today. One neighbor even thinks he saw a kichkandi, a sort of female ghost. They are all very scared as you can imagine. You and I need to go there and help them. Everyone in the world has heard about some of our folklore creatures, like the Yeti. I mean, it's a cool legend and it's great for tourism. But you know that I'm more worried about threats in the real world, either to animals or to us. Not some mysterious spirit that saps your life force. Do not make fun of what we do not understand, Asmita. In the young man. In the young generation, some people do not believe. But I believe that there is a world we do not see. And I pray several times a day. You know I'm not making fun of religion, Brenda Dai. But I find some of these folklore stories a bit hard to believe. Yes, I know. Let's just... You two should go to the village first. For a new colleague, Dai, we were thinking of giving you a traditional Nepali knife called a kukuli. It's both a weapon and a tool. We use it for everything. Chopping wood, cutting through brush, skinning meat. As a ranger out here, you will need it. Yes, it is ready. In Nepal, we are very proud of kukris, but to me, it is a tool I need in order to work every day. Let us be silent for a while and look out for the tiger. I am on my way. We will talk later.
made this one many years ago. I hope you will make good use of it. Do you want to test it? I am sure you can find some weeds to cut in the village. It will also make the village look a bit more like normal. Thank you. I think that Kukri will become your favorite tool. If you want to help our village, one more thing you can do is to help us repair the damage the tiger has done. Can you please repair the broken enclosures? That way the animals will be safe again after we take care of the tiger. job and does their best for the community, even if you think your help is small. I think it would be nice for us to help the villagers by hunting some game for them. I have sent you the hunting area on your device. That would be a nice gesture from the reserve staff to show that we are doing our best to support them and that we do not defend the wildlife against them. And many of us are still waiting for compensation from the government after last year. Kegarne. consider it a possible man-eater. I was hoping it wouldn't come to that, but I agree. We've used all the resources we could to avoid it, but we can't let it harm people. I agree. Then we need to capture it before it's too late.
Good job. You're a quick learner, especially hunting in a part of the world you're not familiar with. Let's maybe hunt one more. Bad news. The tiger is back. It is near the village. I am almost there. Please go back to the village as soon as possible. Stay safe, both of you. I am fine. I am fine. The tiger... It attacked Suraj. I had to shoot it. Can you hear me, Suraj? He is a neighbor. He is bleeding. But he is speaking with me. The tiger was already on him when I arrived. If I had not taken that shot right away, he would have died. We're lucky that you were able to react so quickly. Good work. I need to take care of him now. Can you take care of the tiger? Follow the blood trail and find the corpse of the tiger. The corpse. Are you sure she's dead? Yes, I am sure. I had a good line of shot and I landed a good shot. The man-eater will not suffer. A man-eater. I hope Suraj's injuries aren't too serious. Now it's a completely different situation. We need to handle the tiger right away. Keep following the blood trail and stay on her guard just in case she's not dead. Once you find the corpse, I hope we can find clues as to what drove that tiger to become a man-eater. Why did she get so comfortable? Or desperate? As I said earlier, Nepal's put a lot of effort into its wildlife conservation strategy in the last 30 years, and you could say we've been rather successful. However, it also means that there are more tigers competing for the same territory and prey. We've closely monitored the populations and their roaming areas, and we're making sure to give them enough space on the reserve and corridors that they can safely use. But recently, there have been more conflicts with the villages located on the reserve grounds. That's what Birendra was referring to. Nepal has had a few man-eaters that made the national headlines in the last few years. And no one wants that.
found the tiger dead. Birendra is a good shot. Inspect the corpse and let us know if you notice anything out of the ordinary. Something wrong with its canine teeth. Damaged, you said. Could you please send me a photo? Thanks. Look, you can see that only two canines are damaged. Really sharp damage, too. That usually doesn't happen to tigers out in the wild. That's also not from today, since Birendra only shot once, and in the heart. If you ask me, that's the work of poachers. We've suspected their presence in the region lately, but we weren't sure. So we have our answer. Because its canine teeth were badly damaged, the tiger couldn't catch its usual prey because their hides are too thick. So it had to turn to easier targets and softer hides just to be able to eat. Livestock and humans. Ultimately, we did this. Birendra Dai, have you heard? We found the tiger had had its teeth shot before. Probably by poachers. Poachers, huh? That is really a shame. But maybe there is not much we can do, Asmita. Maybe we should show our friend what reality is here. There is a flip side to Nepal's successful conservation. So, do you know anything about any poachers, Dai? Who they might be? No, nothing. Sorry, I cannot help. This is why we need expert hunters as part of our staff. There's always some population control to be done. Can you take care of some of the wild water buffalo for us? You'll see similar issues in all regions. Right, Asmita? Things are not perfect, of course. We also have issues with Nilka in the Pahad. Go back to the Pahad, near the spot I'm sending you on your hunter mid. It's good that you get an overview of the various issues we're dealing with. The other day I had an argument with Manish, the young farmhand that works with me. He was desperate to find a poacher to help him make more money. I told him it was a bad idea, and he agreed. But I kind of understand him. I know. People, when they can't put food on the table, or when they lose livestock, they get desperate. But poaching is not the solution. All it does is turn people against wildlife. Locals against the reserve. And at the end of the day, it harms everyone. Us and the animals. You have arrived at the Nilgai feeding grounds. 
You know, for us farmers, Nilgai are simply pests. They love feeding very close to our farms. But ever since the reserve has been established, farmers aren't allowed to clear them out anymore. Hunting is illegal out here. Unless you're a foreign tourist and bought an expensive license, or if you're a warden with a special license. So their populations are out of control, since they have no natural predators, and they ruin our pastures for our own livestock. The only thing we can do is have our wardens do some culling. But we're only a handful for such a massive territory. So we could use your help on that as well. Could you call some Nilgai? At the end of the day, the world counts how many Bengal tigers or snow leopards are alive in Nepal. But they don't count the number of cattle lost to wildlife or even human lives. They don't count how much money we lose. The reserve. They're doing what they can to balance it out, but the bureaucracy is just too slow. Sorry, Asmita, but you know everyone is waiting for compensation for loss of income from the higher-ups. Kegarne. I know. What's to be done? I can only agree with you on that. We're just doing the best we can. But I disagree we should just give up. Virendra Dai, you told me things were even worse before the region became a reserve. It's not as bad as you presented. We've made great progress, and I want our friend here to see the good things as well. Anyway, I think you understand our situation better now. Sometimes the decisions are made by people living in cities, and they never have set foot out here, or seen our farms, or the wildlife. We, the Taru people, know best what to do about finding balance with wildlife here in Tarai. And there are lots of cultures in the Pahar who are experts in their own areas. Gurung, like Asmita, Tarai people, at the Limbu. They solve problems from their offices. But here in rural areas, we're not their priority. That's the reality. that foreign currency has helped us rebuild. The foreign tourists, they're a part of making this ecosystem thrive better, just like you and me. As long as we keep close control on what they're allowed to hunt, of course. But without the reserve's income, we'd be doing even worse. You know that. We have to stop the poachers. If they keep going after endangered species, the government will see this reserve as failing. And shut it down. Yes, I have heard that there are some government grants that are hanging in the balance. If the poachers keep causing damage, Dai, you and I will lose our jobs. Is that what you want? Was that a gunshot? It came from your area, my friend. You are in the eastern Pahad, Sati. I'm too far away. Where are you, Birendadai? Still in Tarai. If you are close, our friend, we would appreciate it if you could go and have a look. Try to find where the gunshot came from. Dai and I will also make phone calls. I tried again to call the boy Manish, but he's not answering. I'm getting worried. He has not visited for three days and that never happens. He usually comes to visit me and take care of my dog every day. Stop calling him a boy. He's almost an adult, and it's possible he's made terrible decisions. I really hope for you and him that he's okay.
Thank you for looking into this, my friend. We're so grateful we can count on you. I see. Two different sets of footprints. A blood trail and just one bullet casing, you said. Could you please take photos of the scene and send them to us? I want to work together on this one. You're right. A single shot was fired, and it was at point blank, based on the position of the blood and the bullet casing. Do you see any trail at all? Those two people didn't just vanish. The blood trail continues, but you can only see one set of footsteps. Is that correct? You are heading towards the village, right? Is that where the blood trail is leading? That's where Manish and his father often stay, when they take their livestock roaming in the hills. They used to have a large herd, but in the last few years, there's been fewer and fewer grazing grounds, and they lost a lot of heads. The last earthquake hit them hard. The boy has never been the same since. The trail led you to a house and the door is locked. I just got a text from Manish. Please, my dad got shot in the leg. Please come help him. Everything is my fault. I should have listened to you. I have to go up north now. I don't have a choice. I hope the Kishkandi does not punish me first. That boy. He fled and went up to the Himal. Himal, on his own. What makes you say that? That was something he said once. The easiest way to solve his problems would be to poach a snow leopard and sell it onto smugglers. We need to stop him. We can't let that happen. Can you follow him to the Himal? I appreciate you want to help, my friend. But you cannot go into Himal without preparation or you will die. I think we have a full mountain kit available in a village in the higher Pahad. Before you do anything, you should equip yourself properly. Do you realize what this means, Dai? After the tiger attack, if a snow leopard is poached and smuggled, we're going to lose our stipends and our jobs. Manish would not do that, I know. That boy would not harm animals in vain. Even if that's the truth, he's going to get himself killed all alone in the Himal. Regardless, we need to go after him. Inside, you'll find a mountain trekking kit. Don't go into the Himal without it.
We know you're an expert at trekking in the wilderness on your own for long periods of time. But things are different here in Nepal, especially in the high mountains. You are ready now. So it's time to go to the main Sherpa village. That is the most accessible part of Himal. Falling off, lower oxygen levels. But some foreigners, they underestimate how long it takes to adapt to the altitude. It can take days, sometimes weeks. It will, of course, affect your physical ability, but it can affect your mind as well. It's called altitude sickness. It can cause all kinds of symptoms, and in the worst cases, it can even cause hallucinations, dreamlike waking states, even in healthy individuals. Even for Nepali people coming from other regions, it's hard. So be prepared. Trekking in the Himal may be one of the most grueling experiences of your life. He's afraid the Kishkandi will take revenge on him. I'm sorry, but I don't believe in the Kishkandi. It's a folklore legend. There are things you just need to believe in, Asmita. And what matters is that Manish believes in it. That's why he's fleeing. And that's why I gave him that charm. The one our friend now has. What? You hearing us worse now? Yeah, because of the altitude and remoteness. It's impossible to get a good signal in the Himal. Expect the signal to get even worse. We'll have to keep it short and clear. You made it to Sherpa Gaul. It's the largest Sherpa town on this reserve. I can imagine you're exhausted after this long trip. You'll need a break. This is the best spot you'll find. It's usually the main go-to place for the tourists on their treks with their guides. Looks very different from the Pad or Terai, right? I previously talked to our friend, the owner of the lodge. His name is Pasang Sherpa. I told him you were on your way and he said you could grab some food there. You need the energy. Are you full? Never underestimate it here. Please take some rest and we'll continue in the morning. Give your body and your mind time to adjust. If you're ready, I suggest you head out to a lookout tower. Our best course of action is to search the surroundings and see if you can spot anything. We need to find our boy Manish and also check if he's been after the snow leopards or if we even have one. Oh, 
may look like a harsh place where the living conditions are extreme. And that is partly true. But some cultures have lived there for centuries or millennia and are used to living that way. They even managed to thrive in the last few decades partly thanks to tourism. Anything strange up there? No smoke or fire. I have an idea. If no one has seen him, how about we check the camera traps that we have left in place for snow leopards? Could you please go check our camera traps and retrieve the video cards? Understood. Then use the computer to check the video cards. Let us know if you see any snow leopards on them.
Only one camera got a snow leopard. One. And no sign of Manish or any poachers. That, that's good news, I guess. I believe there's currently only a handful of snow leopards in our reserve at the moment, so we need to make sure they're safe and unharmed. Go back to the site where that snow leopard was spotted. If there's a poacher, it would be in its vicinity. to get him. The only thing out there is altitude sickness. There's even less oxygen in that part of the reserve. Yes, that's bound to happen. Be careful out there. Maybe that's what happened after Manish angered forces that are outside of this world.
Hey, wake up. Are you okay? I'll help you. Namaste. Good to hear you're feeling better. Manish, he told us everything. He saw the fire you made from a distance and saw you pass out. He's been taking care of you. He told us what happened. He hired a poacher to pay his family's debt, but had second thoughts and wanted to call it off. But the poacher injured the tiger's teeth. When Manish confessed to his dad, Mahesh wanted to take his gun away. But the safety was off and Mahesh accidentally shot himself. Manish thought he would be punished for this. But he's given himself up now and has given up the names of the poachers. So he'll be charged, but he'll be fine. You said you felt a mysterious presence and saw a ghostly snow leopard? I don't know what happened to you out there. I'm not sure if you ordered anything off. But in any case, you committed to help Manish and somehow that made him come to his senses. Danyavad, thank you for saving him. Now hopefully we can start onboarding you as a warden properly. There's no shortage of work on the reserve, be it in the Terai, Himal or Bahad. Let's split up the work between us and maybe things will look up. We know what's to be done.